Good morning, everybody. How are we doing today? Time to look at another state of the position long-term wise for the Seahawks. Uh, yesterday, we did quarterback, which was obviously a position that a lot of people are thinking about right now. A lot of people want to know what's up. A lot of people want to know what we're going to do. Uh, this next position is not necessarily going to draw as much interest. I already know that. Um, the nose tackle position is not anywhere near as glamorous or noticeable as the quarterback. However, I do believe that it is of the utmost importance that we address next offseason. So I want to spend some time talking about this. It's not going to be nearly as much as I talked about quarterbacks because I'm going to say it straight up. The, the, whereas the quarterback market next year looks really appetizing, the nose tackle market, which isn't surprising because there aren't exactly a ton of nose tackles out there in general, it, it's not great. And also, I will admit, we need to see what this defense is going to be in 2023 too, before we figure out exactly how much we need certain things in 2023. So let's try to talk this through real quick here. Try to explain what I'm thinking about with this. So when I say nose tackle, I mean nose tackle. I don't mean a one tech. I mean a zero tech. Because as we all know, when you're running a 3-4 defense, you need a nose tackle. And not all one techs can be zero techs. When I think nose tackle, I think 330 pounds at minimum. Maybe you can get away with a little bit less, but most of those guys are are massive. Um, the, the defining nose tackles of my generation were Casey Hampton and Vince Wilfork. Both those guys, they were listed at about 325, 330, but everybody knew they were actually like 360. Most nose tackles, they take up a ton of space. Um, there are occasional exceptions, but unless I have reason to believe that this defense will qualify as an exception, I'm not necessarily going to believe it. Uh, there were some years where um, the Cowboys with Wade Phillips were using Jay Ratliff as a nose tackle, and he was sub 300, but he was an elite pass rusher. So he was adding value in that way, even though he wasn't a traditional nose. So... Are we going to be able to do something like that? I, I don't think so. I don't think that's what we're going to be looking for. I think we're going to be looking for somebody who can offer a lot of value, holding up blockers, stuffing the run, and taking up space. And like I said, not any old one tech is going to be able to pull that off necessarily. So right now you look at the roster. Al Woods, he's under contract in 2023, but... He's going to be due five and a half million. He's only due one and three quarters million if cut. So you let him play out this year because you need a nose tackle for the moment when you're trying out the new hybrid defense. And I think there's a very good chance that Al Woods is um, released next year. He may retire at that point because he's getting up there in age. I know he's not as old as the number says because he skipped playing in 2020. I, no, wait. Yeah, it was 2020. But... I don't think that, <clears throat> I don't see Al Woods lasting much longer, and even if you do keep him around in 2023, you're getting to the age where you can't realistically depend on him, and obviously you're not depending on him for anything long term, and Brian Monet is the other nose tackle currently on this roster, he is a free agent next year. Now, <clears throat> Brian Monet has the size, he has the girth to be a nose tackle, a credible nose tackle, but he's just not that good based off what we've seen so far of him, which isn't a ton, but it's not a trivial amount either. He He's okay. He belongs in the NFL, but I don't think he should be playing any more than 10 to 12, maybe at most 15 snaps a game. So even if you bring him back going forward after 2022... You still need more. Now, how much more? Because let's say in this hybrid defense you're running, you're doing 30 snaps a game or so of 3-4, and then the other 30 snaps estimated. You'll probably play more snaps than that, especially with the way our defense has been left on the field so much in recent years. But let's say you're doing 30 snaps a game of 3-4 stuff. Then you have Monet for 10 to 12 snaps, 
and then you just need another decent guy for the other remaining snaps, 18 to 20, and you don't need to go out and spend a ton of money on a superstar. You can just platoon it with Monet and whoever. So if that's the case, then you can just go get a bargain basement guy for a couple million bucks and just platoon and hope it works out and know that you're going to be running 4-3 a small majority of the time anyway, where you only need a one tech and you've got one techs in guys like Puna Ford. Puna Ford has proven that he can do very well in that one tech role. So granted, Puna Ford is a free agent next year as well, but if that's the way you're going to go with things, the nose tackle need is not as huge as initially thought. But if you're going to build your defense around this 3-4 stuff and run it most of the time, you need something better. Either you need to get rid of Monet entirely and bring in two decent guys who can platoon, or you can keep Monet, but you need to bring in a stud to start in front of him. You need to bring in somebody who can grind 40 plus snaps a game at nose tackle and then Monet can clean up what whatever's left unfortunately I'm going to say this right now the options at nose tackle are thin because honestly there aren't a lot of nose tackles out there there aren't a lot of guys who you look at and go that guy's capable of being a nose tackle even the bigger guys you got to be really big to get my attention as a nose tackle which brings me to the first topic in this video I want to talk about Puna Ford real quick some people think he can do nose tackle. It's not impossible. But when I look at a guy who's 5'11 and 310 pounds, I, I just don't see it. I, I don't think it's likely. And I don't want... Now, if you want to give him a chance this year, because this year is going to be kind of a punt year anyway, probably, you're not winning the Super Bowl this year, then sure. And if he does great, then one less thing we got to worry about next uh, year. But I'm not counting on it. To me... Puna Ford's role in this defense should be a one tech in the four three sets, and then or or however we plan on doing this hybrid. Again, we're gonna have to see, or doing uh, defensive end stuff in the three four uh, alignment. So, I I I just don't think it's likely. I wouldn't bet on it. And again, Puna's a free agent next year anyway, so no guarantee he's back. Um. As for the free agents that you can bring in, I found a few who got my attention. These are all guys who I I, I think they have the profile to do nose tackle stuff. Uh, some of them are probably not going to be thrilled about doing all nose tackle stuff, so you are going to have to sell them on the hybrid possibly because in the hybrid they can move over and play uh, one tech and it's at least a little bit more likely you're going to get some notice there. It seems like the one techs just get more attention than the defensive tackles. But uh, these first four guys are like the big guns for me. We got Dalvin Tomlinson from the Vikings, going to be 29 next year. Based off his most recent contract, if he has a season in line with his previous seasons in 2022, I think you could probably get him for like two years, 30 million, 15 mil a year. Sounds like a lot of money for a nose tackle, but if you're going to really aggressively run a 3-4 defense most of the time, you can get Dalvin Tomlinson, bring back Monet for cheap, and then you've got a platoon at nose tackle that features one really solid guy and one decent backup guy. Uh, a Sean Robinson's another one in that vein. Uh, he's more of, he, he doesn't really offer you anything as a pass rusher at all. Very, very little compared to a guy like Tomlinson. He's going to be 28 next year. And because he doesn't really offer anything as a pass rusher, I say three years, 24 million. So a little bit less per year, or actually a lot less, but uh, he's more of just the pure... Uh, run stuffer guy. But again, that's kind of what you're looking for anyway. Uh, Malcolm Brown or Malcolm Brown, no L in there. I don't know what's up with that, but uh, 29 years old, based off his recent contracts, based off his play, I estimate two years, 20 million. One thing to keep in mind is these players and how much they get next year is going to be heavily influenced by what they do this year. So sometimes I just have to take a guess that will in many cases, probably not even be close to the actual number, but um, we do the best we can. Maybe the biggest gun you could uh, whip out here would be this next guy, Deron Payne. Next year, he's still going to be young. He's only going to be 26. Uh, coming out of Washington, he's not really exactly what you're looking for in a nose tackle, 
but maybe you can make it work. It depends on your willingness to be creative around a specific type of player. Maybe he needs to put on a little bit of extra weight so he can hold up in there. And maybe you could find a way to make it work. Uh, if he could add a little bit of weight without losing what makes him special as a player on the line, then maybe it makes sense. But this is the one that's going to cost you the most. I said three years, 45 million. It could be more. This is a blue chipper. This was a first round guy. This is a guy who uh, Washington may very well bring back on a lucrative, lucrative contract because he's good. So Duran Payne, to me, would be the big gun you could pull out. I'm not saying I like it. I'm not saying it's likely. But there it is. Um, these last three guys are kind of like bargain bin guys that you could get if you plan on running only occasional 3-4 stuff where you're fine rolling with Pune as your one tech on most snaps. Um, you could platoon them with Monet and have two okay nose tackles who can also do one tech stuff if the need comes up. Jonathan Hankins, big dude. I think he's listed at 360, so he might be 420 for all we know. Uh, he's been around the league. He's 31 now. Um, never really worked out as much of a elite player or anything like that, but he had his moments. You'd probably get him for like one year, three million. Just take a shot with him. Justin Ellis is another one, older as well, 32. Uh, based on the fact that he's basically getting vet men on his recent contracts, I estimate one year, 1.5 million. Same for Vernon Butler, 29 years old. These guys, they have like the 340, 350, 360 size that you're looking for in a traditional nose tackle, but they're just they're just kind of jags at the position. Uh, and, and they don't draw on, draw on the big bucks because it's not a position that's all that lucrative these days, so you can probably get them for cheap, but you're going to get what you pay for, but it could work. Uh, the draft. Now, there isn't really a whole lot here, which is one of the reasons why I really like Travis Jones in the most recent draft. It's not often you find a credible uh, zero-tech type of player in the top ranked in the top 50 of a prospect list. Last year, you had two. You had Jordan Davis and you had Travis Jones. And I didn't really want Jordan Davis that much because you were going to have to spend number nine on him. But... Travis Jones, you could get in the second round. Um, nose tackles being available, being graded as second round talent, it seems like it doesn't happen that often. So, when I look at this draft, I, I don't see the same interest in potential nose tackles or even really one techs, right? Now, the good news is some of these guys are going to put on weight because they're still in college. They're going to end up like some of these guys that are listed at 310 right now might end up 325, 330. Uh, it depends on how they see themselves as a player in the NFL. So there's time for this to change. But as of right now, I only identified four guys in the first half of the draft that I have eyes on. Uh, the only big gun is Jalen Carter, Georgia. Now he's probably going to be a top five pick, so I don't think that's realistic. But he's already listed at 311 pounds. Uh, some of the stuff I read said they think he can add more weight if he needs to, so maybe you can make it work, but it's definitely not ideal. Again, you want your nose tackle to be a couple dozen pounds heavier than that most of the time. So unless you're willing to get creative, he's going to have to add some serious weight. And is that going to make him lose what makes him special as a player? Eh. Maybe, right? Uh, Jervon Dexter from Florida, 6'6", so he's tall. And he's 313 pounds, so if you look at him and you say, like, okay, you need to add another 15 to 20 pounds, and then you'll be good, yeah, yeah, it's it's reasonable, right? Uh, right now, he projects to be a third rounder, so if he ends up deciding to go that way, where he becomes the uh, space eater, that's a reasonable thought. Zach Pickens from South Carolina, 6'4", 305, gonna have to throw on some serious weight to fit into the nose tackle prototype, but... Uh, He's got the frame for it, and he's currently projected as a third rounder. The only guy I found in this draft, at least in the first 150 plus picks, maybe even 200, who jumped out to me as an obvious zero tech nose tackle is Justin Rogers from Kentucky. This guy's currently listed at 336 pounds, 6'3". He's got the size. So he's like an early front runner for me, even though he's only projected to be a fourth rounder because he can already 
offer the size. And that's it. Um, we're going to need more information here, right? We're going to need to see what the defense does in 2022 to know what we need in 2023. If we play Al Woods a ton, then we're probably going to need to bring in a big gun to replace him in 2023 because if we use him a lot in 2022, he's not going to have a lot of gas left for another season anyway, especially at his age. And it, it, I remember, Puna's a free agent as well. So even if you think Puna can do it, you do have to realize that Puna is still... There's no guarantee Puna is going to be a Seahawk in 2023 either. So these are the options as I see them right now. This is always kind of a weird area when you don't know who's going to be capable of putting on weight. You don't know what the defense is exactly looking for from their players. Um, obviously, we're just going to have to sit back and wait on some of this. But as of right now, with the information I have in front of me, figuring what we probably want at the position and what we're probably going to prioritize at the position. I think that these are the guys to keep an eye on. These are the guys with some appeal. I think that um, if you could get a guy like a Justin Rogers in the fourth round or even the third, if he has a nice season, then that's a relatively cheap way to address the problem um, with, with one fell swoop of not even a super high valuable pick, not even a top 50 pick. And I, I, I hope the solution ends up being as simple as that. So that is my other DEFCON 1 position on the Seahawks in 2023 and beyond. It could be not that bad to deal with. We're going to find out this season, I guess. All right. See you guys later. Go Hawks. I ended up going a little longer than I thought I would on nose tackles, but there was a lot of nuance to go through here. So uh, tomorrow there will be a new position Hope to see you guys there. Peace out. Go Hawks. And let me know what you think. Let me know if you think I missed anybody. Let me know if you think I'm not considering things the right way. Uh, hit me up and uh, I'll see you guys soon. Go Hawks. Uh, no stream tonight on Twitch, I don't think, by the way. Just uh, letting you guys know. Taking the night off.